Howdy everyone, my name is Griffin Furlong. I'm a professional engineer in the state of Florida and in today's video we will be moving along with episode 4 of the land development series. Now if you haven't checked out any of the other episodes, I highly suggest you do so because we are going to be covering an entire project from start to finish, except construction because, you know, this is a made up project. Now just to get you caught up to speed, in the very last episode, episode three, we went through a pre-development watershed study. We delineated basins, we calculated CN calculations, and we examined how to determine time of concentration. Now I did only do it for a couple of basins, so I went ahead and did it for all the basins that we have on our project. In this video, we will take it one step further and take these basins, time of concentrations, and we're going to calculate runoff. Now sometimes you will have to do a very advanced watershed analysis where you have to create multiple nodes around your site and off-site. Sometimes you might even have to extract a certain watershed that was developed by your county and puzzle piece your own site into it. Now we're not getting super nitty-gritty like that. What we are going to be doing in this video is simply calculating a runoff rate using a program called ICPR, which is now also known as Stormwise. Stormwise is a program developed by Streamline Technologies and it is heavily used in the southeast region of the United States. Now please keep in mind ICPR or Stormwise is going to be using the SCS method. The SCS method uses CNs and time of concentrations, which is what we already calculated. Now again, some municipalities might be different. Sometimes for certain watersheds, you can simply use the rational method, which is Q equals CIA. In this case, you could take each of these basins that are shown here, and you could do a Q equals CIA to develop the runoff rate. But in this video, I really wanted to show the types of programs that we use because I get questions all the time about what I use. So I want to show you guys how I use Stormwise to develop a runoff rate. But I'm already talking too much, let's dive right into it. All right, so like I said, we already have all of our basins. We have basin A, B, C, D, E, F. Now I'm gonna show you how I approach this very simple truncated model. But the way I plan to do this is I'm going to be placing a boundary node at each of these little corners. Because if you remember in that last video, this basin is draining to this pond, this basin is draining to this wetland over here, this basin is draining to this floodplain comp pond, you got this huge middle basin draining to this wetland, then you got this basin draining to that floodplain compensation pond over there, and then you have this basin draining to this pond. So we have basins going every which way, right? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to understand just the total runoff rate into each of these little quadrants here. The reason why we wanna calculate the runoff rate is because when we do our post-development condition, meaning when we actually build this neighborhood and grade it and create ponds, we are going to be held to that discharge rate. So let's say at the end of the day, if this pre-development discharge rate was 100 CFS, well in our post-development rate, we will be held to 100 CFS or less. Now let's go ahead and start setting up our nodes in ICPR. I can already tell I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six. Each of these basins is just gonna drain to a boundary node. And again, for our advanced people out there, I know your immediate comment is gonna be, well, you kinda need to put some volume storage in there at each of those nodes and you need to understand what's downstream and yada, yada, yada. I, I definitely understand that, but again, this is a very basic walkthrough of how you can set up a very easy truncated model just to get an idea of the runoff rates. If you guys really are more, now if you guys are interested in that detailed analysis, I will be more than happy to create another video. All right, so let's set up our nodes. I'm gonna go ahead and go into ICPR. And here we have ICPR, we have it open. I've simply just created a new ICPR model. And if this screen isn't popping up, I'm gonna go ahead and close it out. This is what you might get right when you open up into the program. Now, if you want the graphing view, you can go to mapping and graphic view. I personally like laying everything out in graphic view because it's just kind of easier to look at. 
I'm definitely a visual type of person. Now, the first thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be laying out the nodes. Now, nodes can either be one of two things. They can either be storage volume, meaning they have some sort of stage area and there's a cumulative volume. Think of it as a pool or a pond or a wetland, it fills with water. Or it could also be a time stage node, meaning I'm going to give this node a certain stage at a certain time. Volume doesn't even matter in this case. I am telling the program what I want the stage to be. And again, if you don't know what stage is, stage is the elevation at which the water is at in that unit. Now in this case, since I'm doing a very easy truncated model and just getting discharge rates, I'm just going to be using time stage nodes. So in order to actually create a node in graphic view, you first wanna to go to this little drop down here and here you have a whole bunch of different options. You have nodes, you have links, and I can keep going on. You got weirds, you got a whole bunch of stuff. You even got your basins in there, but we'll get to those in a second. I'm going to be creating node time stage. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it. Now, you have a couple options over here. I can either place 1D graphic element or I will create. Well, we haven't created anything yet, so I can't place anything you could go up to this little tab up here to 1D hydraulics and make your nodes as well. But I wanted to show you the graphic view. So I'm gonna go ahead and do create 1D graphic element. And now it's gonna ask me to pick some points. I'm gonna go ahead and just easily drop some points in here. I'm gonna zoom in. Now I kinda of wanna show you that you can change the color and the size of, of these nodes. You can go up to preferences graphic element properties manager. I'm gonna go here and here's how you can control all your colors and sizes. I have a node time stage. I'm just gonna kinda of make that a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make that 10. Press yes to update. I just wanna kinda of beefing that boy up. It's kinda of small, I don't wanna keep zooming in. So there we go. And then we also have some text color. Make sure you turn on your scenarios. These are where all of your little reference points are gonna show. So in this case, we have just our scenario one, and you can create a whole bunch of different scenarios here. Here are all of the hydraulic network components. So we just laid out a time stage node, and you got your symbol, and then you got your text. So this text was just off. So that's how you can get that. Now I can double click this node, and this will pull up the node card. Another way to access this node card is that you can go up here to 1D hydraulics, and then you can go up here to nodes. And then you'll actually see all of the nodes that you can create. So I wanna call this one, I wanna call that one node D. That's gonna be that big wetland. I wanna, I wanna know how much water drains to that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and title that there. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and create all of the other ones. All right, so now we have all of our nodes named and now we need to throw in some basins. So I want to go back up to this graphic view, to this drop down, and I'm going to do simple basin. Now I see, you know, you might see something called manual basin. Uh, manual basin is a little bit more detailed. This is how you can really break down components of a basin. You can have certain impervious sets. You can have certain CN sets. It, it's really fancy. I'm gonna go ahead and use simple basins because all this needs is a CN a time of concentration, and just I think a couple other parameters. But let's go ahead and start creating these simple basins. Now, I'm gonna do create, and it's gonna say select node. Well, this basin is tied to, you know, whatever node that I choose. You notice how I hover over, it does a little pink selection tool there. I'm gonna start with node D. Now it says select center point for simple basin symbol. So I will be selecting where this basin will be located on this map. And I'm just gonna do one of those guys there. I'm gonna double click it. And then I'm gonna title this basin C. And I call these the basin cards. Any, any dialog box that pops up is just a card. So this is a basin card. Those other ones were node cards. And let's go ahead and, and fill this necessary information out. The very minimum that we need, guys, is time of concentration, area, curve number, and then this unit hydrograph. 
Now, a little piece of advice for unit hydrograph, I would go ahead and right click, select existing item, and you're gonna choose the peaking factor for your site. Now again, this varies by municipality and a lot of times there are certain codes at what you need to use. I just know that for this example project, this is UH256. I do have other videos on this on what exactly it means. Go to my other video on setting up a storm in ICPR and I will dive more into detail about what this means. Notice how my peaking factor updates with that as well. But I need my information. I base an acreage of 3257 and then with a CN of 83, 3257. Let's go ahead and enter that area. Now notice on this bottom left dialog are your units. So this in case is acres. So 3257, that curve number was 83, and that time of concentration is in minutes. And what was it again? I think it was 57, was I right? Okay, yeah, that was right. And this is all we need, guys, to set this up. This is the minimum information that you need. You can get really fancy with the percent impervious and all these, but that's all you need. I'm gonna go ahead and set up all the basins so I'm not wasting anyone's time, and then we will look into running this model. All right, we are back. So I've created these boundary nodes. And again, these are time stage nodes. These are not volume nodes, not volume nodes, very important. These are basins associated nodes. And really all we're doing with this exercise is understanding how much runoff is going to each of these nodes. And we can add them all up to get a total on-site discharge rate. So all this is actually set up and ready to run. What I do wanna show you is the simulation tab up here. We can go ahead and go to simulation manager. I've already set up a 25 year, 24 hour storm. If you don't know how to do this, check out my little video. I'm gonna put a little card up here. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm running a storm that's going to have nine inches of rain over 24 hours, but I am ready to execute this simulation. So in order to execute the simulation, once you're in the simulation manager, you can go down right here and do execute simulations. Now let's see if we get any errors. We might, I don't know, maybe I missed something. In order to run this scenario, you can click these boxes. Current project must be saved. This is very typical. All right, looks like we got one error. Well, how do we figure out this error? You can figure out your errors if you go to the simulation manager and you can go down to one of these tabs. If you get an error, it won't actually be able to run. You can get warnings and still run, but this thing wasn't able to run, so we need to figure out why. Duplicate basin name. Ah, did I... I must have named a basin the wrong thing. Oh, I did. I'm sure you're probably watching this and wondering why the heck I named it Basin C, but this was actually good because now you'll know how to resolve certain errors and where to go for errors. So I'm kind of actually glad that happened. Now let's run it again. And we shouldn't get any errors because that was only one error. So it always asks to save. And I know it's running if it actually starts to tick its time over here. Now, sometimes when you run this, you can see all these stages fill up. However, again, these nodes are not volume nodes. We're not determining how high these nodes stage. We are just getting discharge rates for this example project. Well, it's all done, but how do I even view a report? Well, you can go up here to the report tab and what I want to understand is the inflow of the node. So I'm gonna go down to 1D nodes. I'm going to go to max, because that's the maximum of this scenario. And I basically want to see the scenario, I wanna see the simulation, I wanna see the node name, and I really want to see the maximum total inflow rate. That is what I want. Be sure to click your scenarios over here. A lot of times what happens is people don't realize that they have to go to this tree. You actually have to click that simulation there and you can click all these nodes. An easier way to do that is to right click one of them and do select all. Now I'm able to see the maximum total inflow rate to these nodes and we're ready to view for the report. I'm excited to see some results. So let's, let's try to analyze this guys. Which node has the greatest amount of discharge? Well, no surprise that node D had about 63 CFS in that 25 year storm. 
That's a lot of CFS guys. Now, which one had the least? It looks like node E. Yeah, it did have the smallest basin. So that pretty much makes sense. And now we have a combined CFS going off of our project. Let's add all of this up in our handy dandy calculators. I'm getting a total of 147.81 CFS. So that will be our pre-development discharge rate that we have to meet in the post development. So once we develop all of these ponds, we're gonna be building control structures within the ponds to control the amount of flow out of the pond. Now I will preface this for like the 100th time. This is a very simple model where we are just studying basic sheet flow off of a site. This model was not complex at all. Sometimes you will get challenges where you have on-site wetlands that fill up and they overtop earthen weirs, you have to take into consideration that time that it fills up and the time that it takes for water to spill over a weir. You also might have existing ponds on your site where you have to know the staging. So all in all, every project is different. And in this example project, we were just calculating a discharge rate. Well, honestly, that's all I have for this episode, guys. I know a lot of you are very interested in how we get to the post development. Episode five, we're going to study how we're gonna size these ponds and if they're adequate enough for treatment, attenuation, and we're gonna walk through exactly how we dive into the post-development stormwater design. But be patient with me, these videos take a long time. And if you learn something new, please hit that like and subscribe button, it really helps out the page. Also, if you are an engineer, feel free to comment below. I wanna build a community, so I'm really curious as to what type of engineering that you're doing, who you work for, how old you are, and why you are tuned into my video. But again, guys, that's all I have for tonight. I will see you in the next video. Peace out.